Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we'll have the latest from the live radar run for the latest UKV have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days as progressively over the next 48 hours we are heading back towards heat wave conditions initially in the south but by the weekend it will be widespread with temperatures well in excess of 25 degrees and for some could even be into the low to mid 30s. We're not just talking about southern or eastern England here. We are talking about as far northwards as northern Scotland, northern Ireland, and even parts of Western Republic of Ireland will exceed 25 degrees. And a few of these spots could even get above 30 degrees, which is pretty exceptional for those northern and western areas. We have to look at that in further detail from the latest GFS, GM, East Indoor and the ensembles, as it does look like the middle 10 days of the month are going to be exceptionally hot, with initially this first round of heat arriving over the next kind of three or four days, lasting through to next week. And we're already starting to pick up on a secondary spike of heat, perhaps around the 20th of July. And the GFS today has produced 40 degrees once again across parts of the East Midlands, bringing the 20 degrees firm back in. Now, if you saw the video from a few days ago, we were seeing that from the GFS. I think it was on Friday. We saw that in the video. It did sort of come out of the model output, but in this latest run, it is back again. It doesn't have too much support. I must stress that but it is flirting with that idea nonetheless. So we'll check that out in detail in the second half of the video. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. Now, if you start on the live radar, you see it's a mostly dry evening. We're recording this around half seven on Monday evening, but there are some thunderstorms down the North Sea coast, especially across northern and eastern England here, towards the Scottish borders, heading probably to around the Newcastle area in the next couple of hours, and a storm uh, area, a few cells breaking out towards Hull and Grimsby. So some pretty heavy rain there, but elsewhere it's dry, it's sunny, and temperatures are all right. They're not great. It is really peaked around the low 20s today. So it's actually been relatively poor compared to most of this summer so far. But it's not been too bad. We've had a bit of a northerly wind. And that's why those temperatures are a little bit lower. We have seen quite a bit of rain over the past couple of days as well. Uh, it is quite fitting that we are now heading into a hot spell. I've seen a couple of days of pretty torrential rain for many. So we do have a look at those temperatures uh, around I said half seven this evening. You can see it's not great. Lots of blues and lighter yellows indicating temperatures in the mid-teens or even low teens. Uh, maybe even high single digits for some in the north. So it's not particularly warm at the moment. But as I said, we are in a slightly cooler blip for that heat returns in the next 48 hours. Now, if you head over to the latest UKV, you can see those showers and storms heading down the east coast over the course of this evening. Could be a bit of activity further inland into the early hours of Tuesday, but generally speaking, that's the last meaningful rain we're going to see for the foreseeable future. You can see bits and bobs of rain for northern Scotland, but really nothing really that accumulates. And it's going to be pretty dry, bits and bobs of cloud around, but progressively sunnier and hotter through Thursday and it starts to peak really into Friday. Look at that wall-to-wall -wall sunshine from the north of Scotland to the south of England. Bone dry conditions. And you see that continues into Saturday where it looks even better. Pretty much clear blue skies for 95 to 99% of the country. A bit of cloud drifting in across the North Sea. And for the Republic of Ireland, maybe a few bits and bobs of cloud drifting in. But look at that. Can't ask for much more than that. You can see with the upper air temperatures, it's pretty cool at the moment. But progressively, over the next day or two, the air mass is going to warm. Nothing crazy as we head into Wednesday. But progressively, Wednesday into Thursday, those upper air temperatures start to rise, low to mid-teens. And watch what happens Friday into Saturday. Those oranges become widespread, not only for the south and southeast, where we've seen lots of hot weather so far this summer, but even up towards northern Scotland, which is the really quite remarkable thing about this heat wave coming up. It's similar temperatures, at least initially, for southern and east areas, low 30s. We've seen that so far during June. But the one thing we haven't seen this summer is the extent of the heat from northern Scotland to southern England and as far west as Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland here. Temperatures could be 10 plus degrees above average. Now you can see as we head into Tuesday, temperatures will be slightly higher, maybe 23, 24s, but that's really only hovering around average for the time of year for the southeast. 
into Wednesday. Temperatures rising slightly higher, 24 to maybe 28 or isolated 29, but still widely nothing too remarkable yet. Not really exceeding heatwave thresholds in most areas. But really it's Thursday where that heat ramps up for the south and the east. Widely 28 to 30 degrees, exceeding those heatwave thresholds. Warming up northwards and westwards into the low 20s, but nothing too remarkable for midsummer. But then as we head into Friday, those northern and western areas get into the mid-20s, maybe even upper 20s, 27, 28 degrees, somewhere across Scotland, Northern Ireland, and the Republic of Ireland, and then widely across England and Wales, up towards the 30-degree mark locally, as high as 32, 33, maybe an isolated 34. And then into Saturday, it does actually cool down a little bit across England, and that's because that really warm air transitions northwards. But look at the temperatures across Scotland and parts of Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland getting up towards the high 20s. Not just in a few isolated spots, but actually pretty widely up towards 28 to 30 degrees. And you can see a 32 degree, actually the hottest temperature, just towards the north coast of Scotland. And that will be the fern effect there, with southerly winds coming over the mountains, descending, compressing and warming up. So that will be a local effect, but that could cause some exceptionally high temperatures there across northern Scotland if this sort of scenario, this, this south southeasterly wind does develop. So yes, across England and Wales, it's still hot, still probably exceeding heatwave thresholds for most, not quite as oppressive as kind of the mid 30s, but it's widespread heat. That's the really remarkable thing about this UKV run. Now, of course, this is only one run, but given this is only four or five days, I've got pretty strong confidence in this, given the widespread nature of this heat. We'll have to see a bit of backup as we head into tomorrow and Wednesday, of course, but just shows you that, yes, at the moment, later on this week, the peak in that heat isn't going to be terribly high. We're not looking at 35 plus degrees. We are still looking low 30s nonetheless, but it's the widespread nature, which is really the remarkable thing about this. It's not just 30 degrees across England or Wales, like we've seen so far this summer, but it's across Scotland, Northern Ireland, and the Republic of Ireland. It would be very, very interesting to see if on Saturday we could see 30 degrees in England, 30 degrees in Wales, 30 degrees in Scotland, 30 degrees in Northern Ireland, and the Republic of Ireland as well. That would be quite a remarkable thing. Be interested to see if there's any stats around that. But yeah, hopefully that could occur and that'll be quite an interesting day. So again, we'll update this again tomorrow. We should be able to have a look at Sunday as well, but expecting similar conditions, perhaps even hotter as that air mass starts to escalate. And at the moment, we are anticipating the peak of the heat actually to be Sunday through to Tuesday. So if you think it looks hot there on Saturday, it could be a couple of degrees higher in the subsequent days. And you can see the high pressure building in over the next couple of days. And if we put on the upper air temperatures, you can start to see that warmth wafting in for Friday and Saturday. Then look at Sunday and Monday. Even hotter air moves in. And if we zoom in, zoom in, you can see the 15 degree ice firm engulfs pretty much the whole of the British Isles there. You can see, though, for Western Ireland, though, we could see a bit of fresh air mixing in as early as Monday and Tuesday. Eventually, it does get swept away. If we do have a look at the two meter temperatures, though, you can see uh, in line with the GF, uh, the UKV, sorry, widely low 30s, maybe 34 degrees there. It's still very hot across northern areas. Again, not quite as hot as the UKV because that is high resolution. So it does pick up things a little bit clearer. Into Sunday, though, similar conditions, widely high 20s into low 30s. Again, looking at high 20s, 29 degrees there across northern Scotland. And again, we're not looking at a high resolution run here. We'd expect it to be locally higher. And then finally, into Monday, similar conditions, but slowly cooling in from the west. But slowly cooling in from the west. As I said, though, this is just the starter. The main course of real significant heat could arrive later on. Eventually, a bit of a westerly flow arrives during the middle of next week, but then... At the end of the week, we see another southerly push arriving around the 20th, 21st of July. And look at these upper air temperatures. The 20 degree isotherm moves in. Now, it's not going to be as widespread as the heat we're going to see later on this week. So I must say, uh, I must stress, on Scotland, it'd be cooler in this spell. But look across eastern England, 38, 39, and most likely 40 degrees somewhere in there if we we're able to zoom a bit further you see widely low 40s across mainland europe
So a pretty remarkable GFS run today, not only producing very hot next week to 10 days, bringing a secondary spike of heat there into the final 10 days of July, that the eastern parts of England could be back towards those ridiculously hot levels that we have seen over the past few summers. So very interesting from the GFS today. Now, if you check out the GM again, very hot as we head through the coming days with those southerly winds arriving later on this week. Again, very similar to the GFS, if not even hotter widely. You can see the upper air temperatures up towards the 16 or 17 degree mark quite widely. So a degree or two hotter than the GFS. And that hangs around for even longer than the GFS. Only come Wednesday do we start to see fresh air moving in. And with this being a southerly tracking low, we'd expect to see some big showers and thunderstorms. And you can see that there across parts of England and Wales with some very high levels of Cape. So GM is hotter initially, but it comes with a real downside later on around the 16th, 17th next week with some extremely high levels of Cape. Again, we won't look at that in too much detail just because we're not seeing too much consistency between runs with that, but something definitely to take note of. See the surface temperatures, widely low 30s there through Saturday. Sunday, similar conditions, even showing 31 degrees there across the central belt of Scotland. So very much in line with the UKV in this scenario. And you see Monday is similar conditions. Again, high 20s, low 30s for around the 15th, 16th. We see a big cool off in the south with those big storms moving through. Now, finally, if we finish off by looking at the latest ECMWF, unfortunately, only out to day nine at the moment, as it's just coming out, but I'd rather show you this out to day nine than go back to the midnight run, which is a little bit out of date now. You can see again, high pressure firmly building over the next couple of days, those southerly winds, and it looks hot and remarkably dry even into next week. So it's very similar uh, to the GM in terms of being very, very hot initially, um, but what it does do is keep that high pressure around for longer. And it does mean that we stay very hot and very dry, even into the middle of next week. So GFS brings a bit of a breakdown, but it's not a particularly thundery breakdown. It's just fresher air moving in. The GM does keep it very hot, even hotter than GFS, but has a thundery breakdown middle of next week. The Eastern UF is very hot, but it slowly breaks down, but actually stays under higher pressure. So probably would still remain very warm, especially further southwards. And of course, we go back to the GFS, extreme heat returning once again. So yes, yeah, some differences between the runs, but they all agree on the fundamentals that we are in for a pretty hot next couple of weeks. We're looking widely around the 30 degree mark later on this week. As said, up and down the country locally could be even higher than that. And then potentially we'll have to wait and see what happens in the final 10 days of the month, but could be further extreme spikes of heat. Maybe 40 degrees could be back on the cards. And if you finally look at the latest ensembles, you see the escalating temperatures over the next few days, peaking around Saturday, Sunday, Monday time, before so dropping off around Tuesday, Wednesday, around sort of 13th, 14th. That's when we start to see a bit of a drop off. But you see most ensemble members get towards that 15 degree mark. Some still get towards the 20 degree mark, which would bring in the realm of mid to high 30s. But as we saw, most operational runs don't, UKV doesn't, or at least initially. So still low chance of that, but it's there. A couple of runs get towards that 20 degree mark. Drop off around the 16th to the 19th of July, and then potentially another pickup. And you can see the operational GFS there with a big green spike at the end of its run. That is that potentially 40 degree run. You can see it has got some support. There is runs around it, but it is quite far off the mean about 10 degrees above the mean. That's why I say it hasn't got too much support in today's run. But there definitely is a bit of an uptick there around the 20, early 20s of July. So we can't rule it out, I must say. So it'll be very interesting to see that in the next couple of days. Dew point, uh, sorry, the two meters temperatures, big rise in those temperatures over the next five, six days, pretty much increasing by a couple of degrees every day, peaking around the low 30s later on through Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, maybe even mid-30s for a drop-off next week, and then potentially another spike. Dew points is the big thing we need to keep an eye on. You can see dew points are turning higher. You can see it's cool and dry at the moment. That's why it's feeling fresh. Dew points are going to rise Wednesday, Thursday. They are going to become a bit oppressive, but you can see they hold 
around the mid to low teens, which is positive. The heat we saw a week or two ago, dew points got to around 17, 18 degree mark. Some flirt with that, but not too many. That's what makes it feel really humid and sticky. So yes, we are going to see very hot temperatures, but hopefully we don't see as much humidity. So at least the heat we're going to see over the next few days is a very slow, drawn-in southerly flow off the near continent. It's not a far-fetched big Spanish plume from the Mediterranean. That normally brings a lot of humidity. So yes, it is turning very hot, but hopefully the humidity isn't too high. It will still feel very oppressive, but maybe just slightly less oppressive uh, if we are lucky. And finally, if we look at the latest East and Earth Ensembles, again, we'll have to go back to the midnight run. Again, big spike in heat coming on later on this week. Not too many around still to 20 degree marks. Pretty strong confidence there from the East and the F that it's not going to get too ridiculous hot place this week. And then a drop back towards average, but staying still above average from the majority of runs there into the latter part of July. Bit more of an increase in precipitation. That's something to keep an eye on, but you can see really no precipitation for the next eight days. So that is definitely medium to longer term. And that'll be something we need to continue to monitor. But regardless, as I said, the headline is still very hot conditions to come later on this week, up and down the country, not just across the south and the east. And there is the risk later on through July of seeing further spikes of heat, like the GFS show today, 40 degrees could still be on the cards for this July. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed subscribing if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.